And it is so flippin' crazy. It is a world for liars. I'm now convinced you have to be a liar in order to live in this world. If you're not, you just survive it. Everything is just so unbelievable today. This Alberto, this tropical storm, Mississippi has declared a state of emergency along with Florida. And the storm, well, according to the National Weather Service, it is, I guess here, just at the tip of Cuba. But it, it, that doesn't really jive with the radar here. Okay, maybe it's moving faster than they're saying that it's moving right now. But this is, this is the tropical storm. I've never seen a tropical storm quite like it. Here. They, where is the, of course they show pictures of Hurricane Irma to scare people. But this is the tropical storm. This is either NOAA or the National Weather Center. This is the storm. But that doesn't jive with what we are looking at on the satellite right here. Whoa. Well, if this was the storm, then it's breaking up. Clearly, right? It's uh, it's quite large, but it's not real. This is manufactured. Look at all the geoengineering that is taking place. Look at the manufacturing of cloud substance in Louisiana, Mississippi. This is incredible. It's so artificial. No mother nature does not operate in these nice defined lines like right down here. Tropical storms are I I thought they were like round and you know together. Um certainly more compact than what we are looking at, and they don't have these lines going through them, like a grid pattern, you know? Okay. It's a world for liars. It seems that that's the only way that you can possibly exist today and live, certainly as a meteorologist, uh, I know that they read scripts, but you know, when we have a mainstream media that is putting out these articles, when we have so many people who are still choosing willful ignorance, won't do any research to find out that these these weather events are manufactured by man, not Mother Nature. And these weather events are being used as weapons to destroy people. So we have the governor of Mississippi saying, I ask everyone to please make final preparations to your family emergency plan, especially those that live in mobile homes and low-lying areas. Florida, Rick Scott, he's declared a state of emergency. It is critically important that all Florida counties have every available resource to keep families safe 
and prepare for the torrential rain and severe flooding this storm will bring. I'm not saying that it's not going to bring flooding and torrential rain. I am saying that this is manufactured by man and we will never ever, this, this is our life now. This is our life. Watching man make storms and then watching people suffer the consequences. This is not what we are seeing on satellites. Meteorologists should see that this is a severed storm right here, severed by, oh, frequencies. Go to the National Mosaic and you can see the heart rings. Now, I'm not saying that this is coming from heart. The facility in Alaska, radar can make heart rings. Guys, I have to do this. I, I, I have to. Let's start. Oh, great. Neighbors are home. Neighbors who shouldn't be there because they got notice that they were supposed to be leaving today. Yeah, four people in a box, a little little studio, only supposed to have two people. And these people have created, for me, a nightmare. Oh, great. Life, it sure has become swell. But let's, uh, well, I guess we'll start with the global weather control using nuclear reactors. Nuclear reactors, what? Any large Perturbation in the local atmospheric velocity field at the geographic poles has the potential of affecting weather patterns all over the globe. Using heat from nuclear reactors opens up the possibility of benign global weather control and a globally temperate climate. Yeah, that's what they're doing. They're using weather control benignly, directing heat, heating Earth's, directly heating Earth's atmosphere by nuclear reactors to create artificial low pressure regions to modify local weather patterns. Example, pulling in moist air over oceans in interior arid regions to increase precipitation, to control hurricanes, the trajectory and intensity creating artificial tropical cyclones. Oh, wow. They can create artificial tropical cyclones, tropical storms, over near by seas. And guess what we have? An artificial tropical storm that they are using. The frequencies right here, you can see. Huh. I'm not getting used to this thing. I frankly don't even know how to live. Live this. Let's continue. So, let's just go through some patents. Weather modification by artificial satellites. Yes, a satellite weather modification system. What can they do with this? Well, they can modify the jet stream path and therefore modify the weather. They can cause precipitation. They can increase the humidity. They can rapidly heat air masses with acoustic waves. They can influence wind speed and direction. Yes, they can create a high humidity air mass, or form clouds. They can form clouds. They can create clouds. How about this one? Cosmic particle ignition of artificially ionized plasma patterns in the atmosphere. Oh, and it has weather control applications. What are those weather control applications? Well, modification of the steering wheels that influence weather phenomena, influence the charge 
distribution in mesocyclones. They can protect from lightning or they can create lightning. They can heat local regions. How about the hurricane and tornado control device? They can affect formation and direction of weather system by projecting sound waves toward the periphery of weather systems. And sound waves can cause it to rain. And yes, they can cause droughts and floods, or they could alleviate droughts and floods, but they don't do that. How about atmospheric heating? The microwave heating technologies provide methods for rapid heating of well-defined regions of a weather system. Ground or satellite-based microwave phased arrays focused on specific locations in the atmosphere. It could be used to heat the atmosphere. Oh, and they can use it to modify the weather in the jet stream. Tornadoes. They can influence hurricanes and typhoons and tropical storms by influencing the position of the jet stream. Guess what? Scientists discovered how to create downpours in the desert. In one year, technology created 50, 50 rainstorms where it never rains. Where it never rains. Ionizers produce charge particles into the desert air. Negatively charged ions rise with the hot air and attract dust. And guess what? That dust with the ions changes the molecular uh, composition of the atmosphere. And voila, you've got massive clouds Moisture condenses around the charged dust. Eventually, this turns to cloud, which produces the rain. Guys, this is it. No matter how much evidence you have, We have these freaky people out in the world that just will never look at it and they'll just call you crazy. You can you could you could have a mountain of evidence that people just won't look at it. The USGS seeding the clouds to make it snow. Wow. How about those Commercial weather companies. Here's just a few. Wow. Well, that's a lot. Oh, it's a real lot. West Texas Weather Modification Association. Southwest Texas Rain Enhancement Association. South Texas Weather Modification Association. Look at all of these companies. But guess what? Your state government's hire. Or they work with utility companies to create the weather. The reason why I read West Texas, the, the Texas Weather Modification Companies and Associations is because I'm going to end this video with a guy in Texas who makes it rain? What do we have here? The, the Stanford Awesome Global Collaborative? Ah, the very low frequency transmitters worldwide. You think this is the only transmitters? No. There are transmitters? Well, uh, well I'll show you some 
pictures of those very low frequency transmitters which you have around you. But what, why do I bring you to very low frequency transmitters? Well, guess what? Extremely low, ultra low, very low. These transmitters, the radiation that they can emit, they can create earthquakes, cyclones, tropical storms, localized heating. Park. It, it generates extremely low frequency. So let me bring you back to Florida. Here's your tropical storm, and here are your park rings that can be produced from Doppler radar. Entirely manufactured. And people will suffer the consequences. Again, look at this. It couldn't be more obvious that this is being manufactured. And we have to live this bizarre life. So, that's what those ultra low frequencies that I have posted on my channel showing you how they fan out. But here, radar, park, pulse, similarity. Harp in Alaska produces harp rings. Radar produces harp rings. Harp and radar both have the capability to heat the area above the transmitter. Harp ring. Radar ring. Next round ring. Call it whatever you want. But when you see this, uh, this can generate an awful lot of damage in the area. Here, these are some of our very low frequency transmitter sites. This one in Cutler, Maine. Oh look, they look like Gwen Towers. Oh look, look closely and you can see they are Gwen Towers with the wires going down to the ground. You drive around the interstate, you see the Gwen Towers. And it's not just one. Now, the Gwen, what does that mean? Ground Wave Emergency Network. These are ground wave frequencies going through the ground. It's our emergency network. Originally, they were supposed to be 300 miles apart from one another. Why do we see these? Gwen towers, which are different from cell phone towers. Cell phone towers, everybody knows what they look like. They come down, they have four legs. They go on up, they have all those instruments all over, and they're not as high as these antennas, and they don't have the wires going down into the ground. Cell phones are different from Gwen towers. And I'm sure you have seen Gwen towers, and if you have not, Pay attention when you're driving around your area. But I noticed that more and more Gwen Towers were going up alongside each other. You go through Traveler's Rest in South Carolina, and on the main street, you come upon about six Gwen Towers back to back on one side of the street, and then five on the other. And you got your antenna array. They use this for weather modification. I think it's in Pennsylvania, Maryville, but Maryville, right along the interstate. My God, is that ever a very low frequency transmitter site? Because on either side of the highway or the interstate, what you have is about 15 Gwen Towers, and then on the other side, it's about 20 Gwen Towers. That's not for our emergency system. That is for weather modification. 
Here's another site in Wisconsin, Clam Lake. If you look closely, you can see they're Gwent Towers, India, Gwent Towers, right here. Their phased array transmitting station. And we have them all over the country. This is from uh, some Chinese company. It was part of a presentation of ultra low frequencies. And I have been showing you on satellite the fanned out, and you're just going to have to look closely to see that these very defined lines that fan out in a circular pattern, while well, all of the wires on these antennas that are very, very high, they go down to the ground in a circular pattern, and that's what they look like. So, these are steerable, steerable frequencies. And when they use these frequencies, they can steer a storm And that's what we're seeing. You can't get through. So how many people are going to be flooded out? And how many people are going to have to incur higher premiums for flood insurance? How many people are going to have to pay out an awful lot of money that they don't have. You know, I received an email from my friend in Houston who got flooded out from Hurricane Harvey, of course, but her she would never have been flooded out if our Army Corps of Engineers was it the Army Corps of Engineers that released the, the reservoirs? Well, someone released the reservoirs. Oh my God, they didn't have enough flooding in Houston. So they released the reservoirs. It flooded out her home. And I just got an email from her today. She telling me that they had to buy all new appliances, kitchen appliances. <laughs> oh my god. And Best Buy, they were handing out free, free, um, uh, like an Echo or an Alexa, you know, those little gadgets that are recording your conversations in your home. They were giving out free. Recording devices, and people were just so happy to get them. But when you when you live this over and over and over again and keep getting flooded, I have subscribers who have been flooded in Louisiana. Um, are they going to be bringing more flooding to New Orleans? They could be. Oh my God. I, I really, I, I just feel like my, my brain is in this permanent state of incomprehensibility, uh, incredulity, and kind of shell shocked. Look at all of the cheap engineering that's taking place here. It's obvious. Obvious. Look at this. You see it? The grid patterns are right there. All right, I'm going to end with this guy in Texas. And, you know, I, I'm, I, I really am beginning to feel like, what? why am I doing this? You guys know. You guys know. You know, but I can't not.
Well, I hope everybody stays safe and dry and that all of you who are living in Louisiana, because it's not just Mississippi and Florida, they're also going to be targeting perhaps New Orleans. New Orleans, sorry. Um, and I do have a lot of subscribers who live in this area. I hope to God that you don't get flooded out. This summer? This summer. You you succeeded in increasing rainfall? Uh, south of San Antonio, we had aircraft flying on a dozen days in the month of July, treating what we deemed to be seasonal storms. And what was the result of that? Uh, the same result that we've seen since it started in 1997. Some clouds respond very well. Some clouds respond only to a limited degree. Maybe one or two instances when uh, one or two instances when clouds didn't respond as we had hoped, probably because we got to them too late. And when we say they responded very well, what does that mean? It means that the storm lived longer and produced more rain over a larger area. storm lived longer and produced more rain over a larger area. And when you say they responded very well, what does that mean? It means that the storm lived longer and produced more rain over a larger area.